Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications with Jim Dugan from Wizicom USA. How you doing, Jim? Good, thanks. Good, good to see you. So we've got a new antenna here. Yep. Uh, tell me what's going on. So this is the Wizicom LFA uh, wideband element with uh, an active uh, and tunable, controllable LNA or booster with uh, an integrated filter con which that you can also control. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of walk you through the menus. A couple of the high points on this is that the dynamic ranges you can go from uh, minus 12, which is kind of cool if you want to pad things down. Sometimes you're in a situation where you don't may not want gain, but you actually want to go less, and you can control it uh, and uh, down to a minus 12 dBm. And then you can also go up to a plus 27. So you've got a lot of heat. <laughs> And I, I can't think of a scenario <laughs> where I've ever wanted to use 27 dB again, but it's nice uh, that there's the amplifiers in there and uh, the quality of the amplifiers, the dynamic range is uh, such that they can give you that kind of throw. So it's a, it's a good feature. I think the, the real game changer uh, with, with this antenna, and I don't know anybody else that does this, is that it's got, a tune, it's got many filter choices built in. Mm -hmm. And so I can, I can walk you through those features, but yeah. there's, there's a, uh, a 900 meg uh, for the 900 big band uh, fixed filter from 940 to 960 ish, and then there's a, a 40 meg tunable filter that is from 410 all the way up to like 760 because this is a worldwide uh, sold antenna. But uh, the 40 meg window can be tuned and slid up and down the entire band from uh, you know in that window. Uh, so you can also put it in bypass, and then another. I think this is just a really cool thing to know is that. If you disconnect power from it, or you know power was lost, mm -hmm. uh, it just becomes a paddle. It yeah. just becomes a 6 dB, 7 dB uh, gain log periodic antenna. Oh, so it goes. You don't have to be amplifying this. No, I mean if the power got turned off, it still will pass RF, which is good to know. Yeah, there are active antennas, as you know, many that uh, if the power is disconnected, it doesn't pass RF. Right. So, uh, which I don't like that. Yeah, no, that's terrifying. <laughs> as an RF guy, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, so how does, uh, sh show me a little bit about how this works. Sure, yeah, we'll walk you through the menus. Okay, so just get getting into controlling this, the LFA. Mm -hmm. um, to change any parameter, you can just scroll up and down the menu, and if we wanted to change gain, hit menu to enter into that parameter, and then it blinks, and we can just make that change. So I'm gonna go up a few clicks, or down a few clicks. I was saying it does minus 12 to a plus 27 so that's that and to save it you just hit the menu save button and you get saved and then to change the filter it's already on tunable but I'll show you so we can change the three states here are tunable narrow band for the 900 uh, or 900 meg band I guess is the N mm -hmm. and then uh, just a wide band setting 470 to 600 just a wide band uh, but going back to tunable we set that by holding the save button and then we can, lastly, we can go and change the actual filter window with the up and down. And so it's a 40 megahertz tunable bandpass filter. And you can just hit save. Cool. And this will give you everything. Like I see we're way up in the 600 band now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd nice. still be able to use that if you want to. Absolutely. It's nice, uh, sort of a little inside uh, knowledge is that, um, you know, when, when you're integrating antennas like this, I think when you're doing... Uh, say hops or other transmit uh, functionality in in your setup. Mm -hmm. If you if you sort of keep that in a separate window from your receive work, then you're sort of creating lanes. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, um, just band planning in general. And I think this is a huge game changer. And when we're starting to look at smaller amounts of spectrum and uh, smaller chunks of spectrum, to say, hey, I'm going to use this particular open spectrum for all my receive work on this job and I'm going to use my transmitter hops or uh, any kind of maybe, uh, you know, in ear in -ear, yeah. in ear type work uh, that's in a separate band. I think this really uh, allows you to clamp down on what you're trying to receive yeah. and you're not going to interfere with yourself. That's yes. most important. I think that's a, it's kind of an insider tip. I mean, I think it's the biggest mistake that a lot of day-to-day uh, -day users that are not maybe RF specialists, uh, that's the, probably the thing that they uh, overlook. Uh -huh, is they're not filtering to block out their exactly. own transmit antennas. Exactly. Yeah, so this happens a lot. Yes, exactly. That's sort of the number one, uh, I'll say, I'll, I'll use the term, sort of rookie mistake. It's uh -huh. like guys get a bunch of wireless and they just turn it all on, but uh, band planning is a big part of it, and, and having antenna tools like this yeah. make that a very, very, uh, it's a very possible thing to do. You know? 
Now, you had mentioned that there's a, another version of this that can be used with any antenna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> uh, there's also, the, they call this a BFA. Uh -huh. uh, so if you have uh, any existing other manufacturer, just log periodics, and you just want to put this in line, uh, easy to do, same exact functionality. And again, if you lose power to this for some reason, your paddle is still in, it's still working. Your passive paddle yeah, is still working. Yeah, so a great tool, uh, a lot of dynamic range, a tunable filter. It's, uh, it's kind of a one of a kind. And just so people get a sense of this, these are um, not light in a very good way. They feel very um, sturdy. It's well built. And yeah, like they, they will hold up to the rigors of of production that they can be thrown in cases and uh, knocked around. Yeah, even even these antennas, which they make a passive version of this uh -huh. LFA. I mean, if you look at the thickness, compare that to some of the other log periodics. Yeah. I think it's just a really robust. Yeah. Uh, I like the design. I like the the uh, sort of mesh, uh, you know, sort of anti wind load uh -huh. concept, which is we all like, I think. Yeah. Um, but this the element. Uh, not that we need it, but this element does all the way, uh, you know, it does 900 man, which we yeah. talked about with the filter window, but the element goes up to 1.4 gig. So if you bought the passive version, uh, they sell these worldwide and that's why you're able to do it. So if you're going to Europe and for some reason, you know, uh, I guess since we're in the US, that probably doesn't matter that right. much. But. but I mean, you could, there are conceivably jobs where you could go to Europe and have to use that band. The other, maybe the other positive, if you were just getting the passive version of these is that if as we move forward we do get into the 1.4 gig band, you buy one antenna, you kind of that's gonna you're gonna be good on log periodics for a really long time. You're not gonna have to retool because it's a band specific. Right. You know, we're getting it. When we say when Wizzycom says wideband, they mean wideband. Right. Like we're talking, you know, DC to light is how we think. Uh, you also mentioned that this has a kind of a cool party trick yeah. with another friend. Tell, show me how that works, really. Oh quickly. sure, yeah. So. Uh, we, for for our integration work in you know studios and that sort of thing, uh, the idea here is that these can be remotely controlled from uh, from an antenna matrix, which is this is the MAT two eighty eight, and we also have the MAT two forty four, which I think uh, I think Gotham uh, yep. sells that product. Yep. It functions the same way as this does. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of drill right into this. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you can select this antenna, it's connected to this particular device on input one, I can select it, I could name this, yeah. and then I'm going to just drill in here really quickly and show you that I can make the same changes, uh, the gain changes from here. So if this was out on a set, this is, this is huge that you can make dynamic changes to an antenna system from your rack, it's, right. it's just revolutionary, I, that idea is phenomenal. Especially when you start putting things up in big lighting grids or right. uh, in like big newsroom sets and things like that. All the functionality that we just showed that we can do on the device, we can do from an MAT-288. And there's also a GUI that you can put this on a network and talk to this through a GUI as well. So you can have this on a network somewhere else and you can be on your laptop making these changes to this and then consequently this as well. It's it's antenna management, it's RF management. You know, this is a it's, this is the next wave of this is how we do it these days. Right. It's changed. Stash these things up in a grid and forget about them and be able to still remote control. Yeah, and 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 the band plan could change for the show and you don't have to worry about what your antenna is. You just it's a dynamic system, mm -hmm. you know. Cool. So, um, when are these available, and do you know an approximate price? Approximate price, I would say, are going to be around eight ninety five um, unilat uh, street yeah. price yeah. for these, and these are going to be somewhere around six ninety five. Okay. And I believe they're in production now. <laughs> so they're coming soon. Yeah. yeah. Jim, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.